There are often many times when crafting the light on a character or in a scene where you want to have creative control over the defuse and specular emission of your lights. And one common need for controlling the specular and defuse emission is when working on characters' eyes, with the director providing such feedback as, please add a small bright highlight to the corner of the eyes. At Pixar, we have a long history of designing and creating beautiful characters and are always paying extra special attention to their eyes and also their highlights. Being able to couple these controls with light linking in RenderMan offers the artists a full creative lighting toolkit to really take their lights and renders to the next level of storytelling. So here we are back in Solaris and we're using our default scene and in the middle here we have our trusty Reflectotron robot. And I've created a key light which I've put over here to the left hand side and I set the intensity to 3 and the exposure is 3 as well and everything else is left to its default. Now over here in the scene graph you can see that we have our spec light which we're going to insert into the scene graph by putting it into the merge node. And you can see here that I've set the intensity and exposure to 3 and again everything else here is set to its default. Now let's say, for instance, that we really like the amount of light contribution that is being emitted by this second light, but this specular here is too bright. This is where this specular multiplier comes into it. So if we lower it down to, say, 0.5, we don't see a huge difference, but we can start to see that our specular highlight is starting to lessen. And again, if we go down to something like 0.2, we're still emitting the same amount of diffuse light, but we're having control over this specular highlight here. And again, over on this side, you can see that this is what it would be if our specular multiplier was set to 1. And then over here, you can see what it looks like if our specular multiplier is set to 0.2. And of course, we can turn it off completely. And this is where the power of the RenderMan lighting toolkit comes into its own, is that we can have full creative control over how much specular this light is emitting. And so by turning it to 0, now we've got rid of the specular completely. So this is very useful when you like the amount of light that is being contributed, but your specular highlights are just too bright. And so let's now put that back to one and let's have a look at the diffuse multiplier. And again, yep, you've kind of guessed it. It works in a similar way. And so we look at this scene and we say, well, we like the highlight here that this light is giving us, but it's emitting too much diffuse light. So if we take this down to 0.5, for instance, now we're getting half the amount of diffuse light yet our specular contribution stays the same. And again, we can take it down to 0.2. And now you can start to see that we're emitting a lot less diffuse light, but we're still getting this specular highlight. And of course, we can say to ourselves, well, we like the amount of diffuse light, but this specular highlight is, is a bit too bright. Yep, well, we can bring that down to say something like 0.5. And this is where the power of CG lights and render man comes into it is that in the real world, it's very, very difficult to start to block out the amount of light contribution and keep that specular highlight or do the opposite where you like the amount of defuse, but you want to dull down the specular. So in the real world, it's very, very difficult to sort of to have separate controls for the defuse and the specular, whereas in RenderMan, you have that ultimate control. And so you can start to see where the power of controlling the defuse and specular separately comes into when you're sort of crafting your characters and your faces and adding highlights to their eyes. But it also has a number of other applications such as product renderings and automotive work as well. So if you wanted to sort of add extra highlights onto the car or onto the wheels, or you had a product that you really wanted to sort of define with some extra highlights, again, this is where the power of being able to control these separately comes into it. So if I take the defuse down to naught, and I just want to scale this light a little bit, so I'm going to make it quite thin and tall. And now it's sort of sitting into the floor, so if I raise it up a little bit. Now what we're starting to get is this very thin, skinny highlight on our robot. And if I bring it around to the other side here, and bring it up so it's not in the floor, and now you can start to see that we're really sort of crafting this highlight, especially on his arm here as well. And so one of the problems you can see now is that actually we're starting to contribute some specular to our floor. And this is where light linking comes into it. So we're going to have a look at that in a further lesson. But basically what it will allow us to do is only tell this light to illuminate our robot and not bother illuminating or adding any specular or diffuse contributions to other objects. And so we can actually eradicate this problem here with the power of light linking.
And so I hope this lesson has been useful. And like I say, the next time you're looking at your character and you want to add an extra highlight into their eyes, or you like the specular in their face, but you just want to add a bit more diffuse to it, using these diffuse and the specular multiplier with extra lights is how you can really craft your character's face. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't only have to be for characters. It can be for all sorts of other kind of styles of rendering where you really want to define the shape and the characteristics of your model or your scene.